with drpremed.com and I want to talk to you guys about applying to medical school but specifically applying to medical school when you're not ready. What I'm encountering from a lot of pre-med students are they're very excited about trying to apply to medical school, get into medical school to become a doctor. But unfortunately, they're not making wise choices about the process of applying to medical school. Specifically, I'm talking about students who don't have the credentials and shouldn't be applying to medical school during this current application cycle. Unfortunately, I get students who are very gung-ho about taking the MCAT even if they're not ready for it. And what happens is they take the test and then they bomb the MCAT. They get a score that's very, very low, below the 50th percentile, even in the 30th, 20th percentile. I've seen that out of students as well. And they're still dead set on applying to medical school, even with that low MCAT score. The reason being that they'll say as well, my GPA is high, my extracurriculars are good. I think that could compensate for my low MCAT score. Or they just feel like, well, I really want to get into medical school, so I'm going to just go ahead and apply now. That's not what you want to do. If you know there's a weakness in your application, that means all the ad comms know there's a weakness in your application as well. So you going ahead and applying isn't going to make up for that. And medical school is extremely competitive where over 60% of applicants are rejected the first time that they apply to medical school. And you don't want to do that to yourself where you apply and you get rejected. I had one student who is um, very, very um, gun ho as I said before, about getting into medical school. And their way to get around the fact that their MCAT isn't what it needs to be is to, <clears throat> excuse me, is that they're going to go ahead and apply to over 40 medical schools. That's, that's not a good strategy. You think, oh, well, if I apply to more schools, then somebody's going to give me a chance. No, that's not how it works. There's basic um, thresholds that all the medical schools have regardless of where you go. And if you don't meet that threshold, you're not going to get an you're not going to get looked at decently or have a fighting chance of getting in. So just applying to more schools, completing those primary application, and then those secondary applications, that's a lot of money that you're tossing down the drain just so you think you're going to have a chance. And I don't want to see that happen to you because most of those secondaries that you get, they're automatic. They don't screen you on your numbers to see if you should even get one or not. They're going to just give you the secondary, you're going to pay the money, you're going to hope that you get an interview invite, which most likely isn't going to happen. And the ad comms are going to look at you and they're going to wonder, why is this applicant applying to our medical school when he has this low of a GPA or this low of an MCAT score? That's a weakness that needs to be fixed before they apply. So why would somebody do that? And then it starts to call into your question, starts to question your judgment. Are you going to be a good physician if you can't make decisions on on your own life and your own process of applying to medical school, how are you supposed to make life and death decisions for patients, counts of families on the best course of action to take if you're um, if you're kind of being what is it the blinders on and you're just focused on the end goal, not thinking about the long term consequences or repercussions of what you're trying to do. So that's something that you definitely want to be aware of because even if you're not aware of it, the ad comes are going to be aware of it. They're going to be thinking about it and no, your GPA isn't going to compensate for a low MCAT score and a low MCAT score isn't going to <clears throat> open doors for you to get into medical school because the problem is there's just way too many over overqualified applicants. Medical schools now they're receiving over 10,000 applications. Yes, 10,000 applications where they're only going to invite 1,000 of those applications and for an interview. So that already just shows you only one in 10 people who apply are even going to get selected for an interview. And so if you're coming to me or any adcom with subpar numbers in any area, that's just an automatic way for you to get disqualified in most cases because they need ways to exclude students and having low numbers is an easy way to do that. And so you need to make sure that you're competitive when you apply. And it, it's never helped when you have to reapply to medical school and, the re and what are you going to tell somebody when you reapply? 
oh, it was because my GPA or my MCAT score was super low, but I just thought there was other qualities about me that would make up for it. No, that's not gonna, how it's going to work. And you don't want to have a black mark on your application just that shows that, okay, you're a reapplicant because people are going to know something went wrong with you the first time you applied because these are professionals who are going over your application, spending a lot of time on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so if they see that, okay, somebody else already went through this applicant a previous medical school when you applied previously and they didn't accept you, what did you do to change or get better? Because then they're already looking at you as like, okay, they're not qualified. Maybe it's just a numbers thing where they apply late in an application cycle and they just weren't enough spots available. That's yeah, That could be your saving grace, but you want to apply early regardless. But overall, what I want to tell you about everything is that Think long term about what you're trying to do and what you want to accomplish. And does it really make sense to just force your way through the process thinking that you're exceptional, that you're special, that doors are going to open up for you just because of things you've done in the past, your extracurriculars? No, that's not how it works. We need people who are going to treat the sick, the injured, and find cures for sick people. And that really boils down to your science. What science do you know? What um, background do you have? Because medical school is all about passing tests and passing your boards. And if you can't do that, a medical school is not going to take a risk and gamble on accepting you because they want to produce students that are going to graduate and become physicians, not students that are going to struggle to get by and make it through the program and so you need to keep this in mind when you're um, in the process of applying to medical school and listen to your advisor if somebody's really giving you honest feedback and you agree with it but maybe you just feel like you want to just throw things out on a limb and see what happens don't do that because there's professionals and this is what they do to make sure that you're on the right track. They want you to be successful in what you're doing. I obviously want you to be successful in what you're doing. If I also be candid, I have to be honest, I got to be frank with you. If certain things just aren't there, I can't say, yeah, go ahead and apply. You can do it, but it would be against my advice and I wouldn't recommend it. So just keep that in mind. Again, this is Jason with DrPremed.com. Wishing you all the best. Good luck to you and everything. It's really not about luck when you're going through your grades, your G GPA and MCAT is really about preparation. So make sure you're putting in the work, study hard, study smart, and good things will happen to you. Again, Jason with DrPremed.com.